How about we can both fit in this bed if we really no, try? No, no. Scoot on in there. No, wait. Uh -huh. Cars? Ripped off. Frozen? Ripped off. Kung Fu Panda? You couldn't even guess how many ripoffs there are of that film. The film industry is all about making that money. But the sad thing for some of us is that not everyone can be cranking out beautiful Disney features that will last for decades to come. For the rest of us, if you're wanting to make some quick cash, you gotta jump on some trends. And that's exactly what these companies did when they decided to rip off some of the most popular films of all time with other appallingly hilarious attempts at replicating the film's content or marketing. I'll admit I've fallen for it before too. Iron Man? How about Iron Hero? No film is safe from the dreaded mockbuster, and that especially goes for animated movies. So let's see what it takes to be called creatively bankrupt these days. The battle will be legendary! Disney Pixar's Onward was a pretty good film. Teenage elf brothers Ian and Barley embark on a magical quest to spend one more day with their late father. Due to COVID-19 and staggered release dates regarding streaming, Onward is still locked behind paywalls and is still showing in some theaters worldwide outside of the US. That's why if, on your way to find a way to stream it, you may have accidentally rented its ripoff. Homeward. This uncanny twin was made by the notorious studio The Asylum, a studio that has become well known for its intentional bad ripoffs and cash grabs of famous movies. I'm sure you've heard of Sharknado, but what about Sunday School Musical, Independence Day, Titanic 2? Homeward tries its best to replicate what it saw in the Onward trailer, with the characters' last names being similar, magical modern settings, and the marketing. I like it, but not a lot. I don't like it. The plot's just different enough to not start a lawsuit, but that's the case with Asylum. It was released around the same time, but if you started watching the two, you could tell which one was a scam. Let it go, let it go, it's just copyright rights. With the Frozen franchise breaking box office records, no wonder people would try to jump on that bandwagon. And one film in particular that has been hailed as a knockoff was The Snow Queen. You see, both films were based off the story by Hans Christian Andersen. But then again, a lot of Disney's films are based off old public domain fables, so sorry to tease you, Disney, but you can't list that in a lawsuit. Let it go! The film The Snow Queen was interpreted as a cheap Frozen knockoff because of the timing of its English dub release and its marketing. Even if their native releases were separated by a year, Snow Queen in 2012 and Frozen in 2013, the studio behind the Snow Queen, Wizard Animation, has gone on to make three more Snow Queen movies and a TV show called Yoko, which have been major successes for the Russian animation industry. However, that doesn't mean there haven't been more blatant attempts to jump on the bandwagon elsewhere. Back in 2013, a company called Phase 4 Films released a DVD called Frozen Land. See if you can spot the difference. Turns out that Phase 4 acquired the rights to a film called The Legend of Cirilla. They then retitled it for release on DVD around the same time as Frozen. It's quite obvious from Frozen Land's cover that this was a sly attempt to get in on some of that frozen cash. The film has near to no similarities in plot, apart from the fact that they are both set in snowy landscapes. As a result, Disney filed a trademark infringement lawsuit regarding the confusingly similar logos and designs. Kung Fu Panda? Don't you mean Little Panda Fighter? Or wait, do you mean Chop Kick Panda? Kung Fu Rooster? Legend of Kung Fu Rabbit? Adventures of Panda Warrior? The Prodigy? Kung Fu Masters? I, I could keep going, I got a whole list here. Kung Fu Panda is, for some reason, a favorite for Mockbuster Studios to make ripoffs of. While not all of these films have the exact same plot, a lot of these films could be easily mistaken for Kung Fu Panda by your grandma trying to get your favorite movie from the bargain bin. But what do you get when you go into the actual plot of some of these films? Little Panda Fighter? It's about a panda janitor for a boxing ring who gets mistaken for another awesome fighter. Chopkick Panda? It's about a panda janitor to a dojo who has to save the village from a tiger villain. Adventures of Panda Warrior? A Chinese soldier is turned into a panda and joins an elite group of martial artists to take down a tyrannical leader. I mean, I'm just not seeing the similarities. Do you? 
Happy Feet was an interesting film. It dissected all sorts of subjects like global warming, religion, power corruption, being yourself, and that's a kid's movie. Tappy Toes is not like that at all. It's a 2D flash animated movie. The voice acting's all right, and honestly, it would pass for a children's cartoon. While the marketing for the movie does seem to be riding on the coattail of Happy Feet, dancing barely has any presence in the movie until you're about halfway through. The plot goes from two birds wanting to eat a penguin egg, then raising the penguin when they call Pingo, Pingo struggles with being adopted, and then he just happens upon some tap dancing shoes which just so happen to scare away some penguin eaters. Roll credits! The director of this film is Daryl Van Sitters, and the thing is, this seemed like a short stint in mockbuster movie making. Along with his company, Renegade Animation, he went on to make two more films you may be familiar with if you're into your mockbusters. The other two films were Chop Kick Panda and Puss in Boots, A Furry Tale. Just like Kung Fu Panda, the Cars franchise has a bigger list than most when it comes to copycats. With the film Planes, you have a more notorious twin, Wings, and its sequel, Wings Skyforce. Sporting similar plot lines, the first Russian film was originally called Ot Vinta 3D, that was then dubbed with a couple of recognizable names actors like Rob Schneider, Hilary Duff, and Jesse McCartney. For the main Cars franchise, you've got Video Brinquedos The Little Cars, Spark Plug Entertainment's A Car's Life, and and the Chinese Blue MTV's The Autobots. All of these products take various inspirations from the Pixar franchise, the Autobots even being sued for the incredible likeness of the poster. But those are only some of the more notorious ripoffs. I would like to introduce to you Wheelie, fast and hilarious, the ripoff with some competence. While the previous car ripoffs may have struggled visually, this film doesn't look half bad. A film animated in Malaysia, the characters are near identical. Wheelie is a spray-painted McQueen, and Putt-Putt is a moped version of Mater. The plot is a bit hard to follow, and some of the stereotypes slash comedy may be considered a tad offensive for today's times, but it was a lot easier to look at than some of the others. If you had a chance to change the title of your film to make more money, would you? Well, that's exactly what Bright Spark Productions did with their film Braver. You may remember one of the more boisterous Disney Pixar princesses as Merida from the 2012 film Brave. So you would think that a ripoff of this movie would be another tale about a princess who wants to break free from the shackles of her royal responsibilities. But Braver is nothing like that. It's another film repackaged to look like Brave. The film you'll find yourself watching in the Braver DVD case is a TV movie called A Fairy Tale Christmas from 2005. It's not even a ripoff, it's just a scam. The company Bright Spark Productions received threats of legal action from Disney after they were made aware of this blatant trickery. Ah, the B movie. Truly a cinematic masterpiece from 2007. If I'm ever having a nightmare, I just listen to a reading of the entire B movie script as I fall back into a peaceful slumber. This is why, when I accidentally clicked on The Little B, you can realize how earth tremblingly distraught I was whenever I didn't hear what is essentially Seinfeld, but with bees! Abley Hinton has, I won't even try to pronounce that right, or The Little B is a film by the amazing Brazilian animation studio Video Brinco who is behind some other great animated mockbusters such as The Little Cars, Gladdy Formers, Little Panda Fighter, and Ratatouille. This company has made it their business to create films based on other famous titles and get English dubs of them to market to an international audience. The animation is stilted, the plot is about war and switching societal roles, the environments are awful. I wouldn't even stick this on for my worst enemy. The thing is though, all of Video Brinquedo's dubs have some voices you may recognize. Who? Uh, like, I don't know, maybe the original Ash Ketchum Veronica Taylor? What are you doing here, guys? You're too good for this! Are you alright? No. 
Bug Bites and Ants Life is a mockbuster made in 1998, around the same time as DreamWorks Ants and Disney's A Bug's Life. It was reportedly the first 3D mockbuster, made by ripoff veteran Spark Plug Entertainment. The plot is incoherent, the animation is bad, and it's boring. It's horrible. I have nightmares about it. Watching all these films is making me slowly lose my mind. The best thing about this DVD, though, because it isn't even funny to watch, because it only came to around 25 minutes long, it wasn't long enough to be considered a movie. As a result, the company shipped it with other public domain cartoons on the VHS and its later DVD release. And if you look up reviews for the DVD, many people consider the filler cartoons to be better than the actual animated movie. Do you know what I thought the emotional and tragic story of the Titanic really needed? A rapping dog. Yeah, you heard me. A rapping dog. Ryan! Get a pitch meeting on this ASAP! The story of Titanic is based on real life, so this isn't strictly a ripoff. But given these films were released around one to three years after the original Titanic, it's fair to say they were maybe trying to ride on the coattail of the original award-winning film. From 1999, we have The Legend of the Titanic, which features an old anthropomorphic mouse telling his grandchildren the true story of how everyone from the Titanic was saved by by a kraken after the ship was sabotaged by some ex-prisoner sharks who were in on an evil whaling scheme run by a generic villain with an eye patch. But wait, it gets better. From 2000, we have Titanic The Legend Goes On, a film where the Titanic does sink, but not without a bunch of anthropomorphic animals portraying confusing stereotypes, some evil stepsisters, and more side plots than you can shake a stick at. And of course, the rapping dog. We'll be busting up laughing cause it's party time. But wait, we're not done! From 2004, we have In Search of the Titanic, a sequel to the 1999 film. We see a bunch of the main characters from the original film go to Atlantis and find the remains of the Titanic. But wait, I've saved the best for last. The Secret Life of Pets isn't a movie I would see again. It's pretty. Illumination have got their cute animated movie formula down to a T. If anything was gonna get ripped off, I would have expected the Minions, but nope. Let me do the pleasure of showing you the Illumination Pets movie ripoff, Funny Pets 2. What happened to Funny Pets 1? What, do you expect me to make sense of this anymore? Shared by the geniuses at Wow Now Entertainment, this film is nothing short of a masterpiece. I mean, who would have thought that you Using the same shots and movements repeatedly throughout the film would never get tiring. Heck, they don't even leave the couch! Why bother when you're just showing animal videos and some poorly animated pets reacting to those videos? That's all they do for an entire movie! It's not funny! It's bad! I I can't do this anymore. I need to get some water. Ah! We were lying. Take that! Yeah, stupid owner! <laughs> And there you have it. I guarantee you'll be pulling hairs out watching these frustrating ripoffs. What do you guys think? Are there any ripoffs we missed? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let us know if you would like another video like this diving into some more divisive ripoffs. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you next time.